Believing in yourself is one of the most important things to achieve the life that you desire. There's nothing more sabotaging than having disbelief in your abilities, low confidence, low self-esteem, that sometimes the losers around us can inject over the years, filling up our subconscious mind into believing that we're not enough to achieve what we're here to do. If you have an inner calling to do something and your imagination is projecting certain things, it is essential that you fulfill those things. The things that draw your excitement and get you pumped up, get your heart racing, they're the things that you should be trying to focus more on because that's where life truly is and the things that excite you. Our imagination is more important than knowledge. If you can't imagine a beautiful future for yourself, your family, your friends, and you consistently picture it, vision it, plan for it, expect it to come, the chances of it actually coming is way less than someone who has a plan, believes in themselves, and has a vision. Easier said than done though. So I completely changed my life many, many years ago, and everyone's always changing their life every day, depending on what you choose to put in your head, because the thoughts that you have and what shows up in your life is actually a reflection of what's built into your awareness. I'm not sure if you guys understand subconscious mind, which is the mind that you have. It's like the part of your brain that you can't really access. It's just there from all the things that you've gone through in your life, experiencing. And then you've got your conscious mind, which is the mind that can think, oh, I want lunch now, or I'm ready for another coffee, or let's go call this friend and catch up for lunch. Your subconscious mind is built up. It could be even over many lifetimes if you believe in manifestation. As a lot of people think that we're here building our souls, learning, evolving our consciousness. And if that is you, then I'm gonna show you how imagination can completely change everything for you. This world and universe is abundant. There's no lack of energy. There's no lack of money. There's no lack of people. Maybe for you there is all these things in your life. But let me just explain to you that that is where your awareness is pointing towards. There is people in the world right now who are living perfect, the most perfect, perfect lives they've ever wanted, the perfect families, the most amount of money that they've ever had, cars, holidays, whatever. Some of that stuff you guys might think is completely meaningless. Look at this beautiful guy going for a walk here. <laughs> you know, mate, we create our realities via our imagination. If you are constantly imagining a future that you don't really want, then you're actually attracting that more and more every single day because our brains have what's called selective focus. Your brain can only focus on four to five things at a time. There is trillions, probably more than that. There's infinity things happening at any time. Planets colliding into each other, grades of grass growing, people going to work, coming home from work, babies born, people dying, a million trillion things happening at every time. And your, what you're thinking about is actually what you focus on more. So your selective focus points towards these things. If you feel like something is an issue, then your brain is going to look for evidence that that thing is an issue. If you think that something is awesome, like your new girlfriend or your new partner, your selective focus will start to search for evidence to prove that that's correct and support your ultimate idea of what excites you the most. Example, once upon a time, before I was a business owner, not that that means anything, but it's a, this is an awareness thing. I used to look at homes and houses, as you see on the other side there, and think, oh, they're, they are th p places for people to live in. That's what they are, that's their main purpose. And then after opening my own business and being scared of not being able to make money if I don't consistently stay busy and get work, excuse me. I started looking at everything as opportunities for business. A house needs maintenance, might need the roof painted, might need the concrete's clean, might need the gardens mowed, hot water service, replaced, whatever. What I'm trying to point out here is that depending on what your awareness is around that subject or that topic or that person, you will literally just focus on that and that will become real for you. So if I start focusing on how houses have an income potential for me, not that I'm even, oh, they, they do, because I'm a real estate photographer, then I will see more of that 
because I'm, I can see the opportunity, my imagination and reality is showing me that, hey, that's real. If you see a certain person and you see a qualities in them and you want to utilize them as an employee, then you'll do that. Do you get what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments below if you don't understand what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is the way you think literally forms your whole reality. Whatever, whatever idea your brain comes up with becomes real for you. This guy's an idiot. Your brain will look for reasons to support why that guy's an idiot. If you think your new girlfriend's awesome, she's so sexy or this and that, you're gonna look at that. But if you zoom out and pretend that you're not a human being anymore, go all the way out, look down at all the human beings living their lives, driving their cars around, and you realize that there's no person in this world that is good or bad. Everyone has both equally in them. It's just some people are more tapped into one or the other. But then your judgment on that from the few events that you've seen of that person is now gonna determine if that person's an idiot or not. It's actually a little bit narrow-minded to think that way. There's all different perspectives. Yes, certain situations that person might be good or bad at something. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. And the same is with your whole life. Basically what I'm trying to get to, long story short, is what you think about is what will show up for you. So if you believe that you're in lack, your brain will look for evidence that you're in lack and that will show up for you more because that's what you're focusing on. That's what becomes real to you. If you believe that it's hard to find a job, then guess what? You'll be filling out resumes, applying for jobs, even though you don't really want to. And you might have minimal success because you think it's hard. I have a mug at home and it actually says a phrase on it, simple, easy, fun. So it's actually a Kerwin Ray quote. I don't know if he got it from someone else who's an Australian motivational speaker, business help person, amazing guy. He, he says, you know, any situation, just tell yourself it's simple, it's easy, it's fun. And when you actually do that, it becomes more simple and easy and fun because you start looking for the evidence of how that is actually more simple than you think. Have you ever had a really big issue happen? You got super stressed out about it. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to, you crack it, you lose it. The whole day's ruined and you just keep looping over it. And really the solution was just one small thing and it gets fixed. It's really the, the issue wasn't in the thing that happened. The issue is in the way you thought about what happened because let me also point out to you that no issues exist in the whole world. If you believe in God and that God is perfect and the creator of all, if you think there's issues in this life, then you're actually pointing the finger at God and saying you made a mistake. It's all happening for a reason. It's, it might be building your character, building your soul. It might be t teaching you that being grateful is important. And when something gets taken away from you, and as sad as it is, we lose people. It's just part of life. We all move on and pass away and taking, you can have something for years and years and years and then it's taken away from you. It's a shock to the system. You're upset now. I'm upset that thing's gone. Most of the times when you're upset or sad that when people pass away, it's not even for them. Like you're upset for yourself that you don't get to be with them anymore. You don't get to see them. Yeah, you love them. You might not get to talk to them. You think about the things that you would have said differently, things you would have done differently. Maybe you reach out and go have a coffee with them. You, you, what you do in the moment is what you're meant to do. Don't judge yourself too much because as I said before, whatever you think becomes your reality. You can think that a coffee's terrible after you've bought it. And yes, it might be, but the, the fact that you're looping on it is making it more terrible. And if your goal is to have a positive life and to have money and abundance and success and a beautiful home and a beautiful environment to live in, there's nothing worse than taking what could be an amazing life and sabotaging it with negative thoughts, which is a part of the human brain. It's there. I believe it's the devil. The devil wants you to feel like you're in lack. The devil wants you to have no money. The devil wants you to constantly struggle and feel like it's too hard, not put yourself out there, feel like you're in competition with everyone, but it's not, it's coll collaboration. And that's another thing I can throw in there too, is if you feel like you're always in competition with everyone, which in a way you kind of are, then that's what will become real for you. But if you believe that people are there to collaborate and because no two people are the same. I went and bought a coffee this morning and the guy saw that I was wearing the microphone. Mark, if you're watching this, how's it going? He does my coffee nearly every morning. He's like, what are you gonna film about? And I said, I wanna talk about how people's perspective limits their life and their ability to achieve their full potential. Because in a way we all wanna achieve our full potential until you get older, unhealthy and lazy, 
then you lose motivation. But this video is a, is a sign that you need to tap back into that person that you once were, that wasn't brought down by life and treated like shit. Like it, all the way, you, the way you think about it, the way you think it is, is the way it will be for you. So if you want to actually improve it, just, it's not lying to yourself. You're just moving into a different reality. You're telling yourself that that thing doesn't bother me anymore. You're saying that, no, there is success for me. No, there is enough money for me. There is a girlfriend for me. There is a boyfriend, partner for me, a, a husband. Because when you act and you're confident that you know it's real, and that's the thing, you gotta know it's real. You can't just lie to yourself. You actually have to know in your heart. Think about it, there's 8 billion people, as if there's no partner for you. There's God, <laughs> endless amounts of money, as if there's no money for you. There's endless amounts of money for anyone who wants it. The issue is you just haven't gone and get it yet. You have to, you have to give something to get something back. But back to the thing I was gonna tell Mark, I, was, I wanted to talk about how people are scared to put themselves out there because they believe they're in competitiveness with each other. You're actually shooting your own, you, yourself in the foot by not going public. <laughs> you don't have to, I'm not saying it's for everyone. Example, there's one of my mechanics and I said to him, he's like, oh, I wanna get busier. I wanna get busier with my work. And uh, I said, well, you need to post on your social media. Like every single job you do, just do a little photo of the car and say, hey, we did this. We changed the tires, we did this, this and that. If you need anything like this, contact us today, post it. You're just reminding people of what you do. What happens is on social media is with minimal effort from your phone, you take a photo, you post it. Maybe 53 people will see it. Maybe 20 people will see it if you're just getting started. That's 20 people who were just reminded that you have a service around that thing. Those 20 people probably know 100 people. And if someone mentions it in the next day that they need that and they're near you, what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna call you? It increases the chances. And I said that to him and he said back to me, oh, but I don't want my competitors seeing what I'm doing because, you know, a guy might open up around the corner and then I'll have no work. And that is a lack mindset. That is a mindset of like, I'm, I'm not confident in what I'm doing. I'm easily replaced. It actually shows to me that he has a low level of care because if you genuinely believe that you're replaceable, then you probably are because you don't put enough passion, love, and really try your best when it comes to doing your work and know that you can consistently keep that up to provide for your family. You're not doing it for yourself and that will re result in lack. That will re result in the lack of work. The same guy who said that, I saw him complaining on social media that someone messaged him on a Sunday to book a job in after he told me that he wants more work. But anyway, each to their own. You can do whatever you want. In my point of view, in my reality, in my perspective, in my awareness that I choose to live in, in my little own world, because everyone's living in their own world. Everyone watching this has got their own perspective and their own life. Completely different situations and perspectives and viewpoints are different people you know that we all mirror each other. You can change a reality by changing your thoughts. That's what I'm saying. If you just think more positive about the situation and you can become more aware about the opportunities around you that exist. And with technology, guys, it's absolutely insane. You can post a video or a photo or a reel. And even now with AI, you can get it made in seconds to get attention around anything. It doesn't really matter that much if, you want, if you're an employee and you don't see yourself as generating your own income. And re really generating your own income is just providing value for other people. A lot of people overcomplicate. Oh, I've got to start a business. It's going to be so hard. You know, I've got to set up this and set up that. And then I've got to come up with this and that. And it's actually quite simple. Provide value to other people, solve a problem, get attention so they can call you, they know, and you build up a brand. It can be complicated if you make it complicated. It can be extremely simple. You see successful business owners all the time start up brand new companies. They can do it in a day. Set up a website, set up a domain, register the business name, whatever, new account, get the product, make a landing page, do an ad with AI. There's people literally overnight making 10, 20 grand overnight because they just have an awareness of that exists and they set it up and they do it. I'm gonna flip around, start heading back. So I'm very fortunate that I live right next to this beautiful view here. Not many people get this. If you have something calling you, which I'm telling you, it's God, it's the universe, whatever you wanna call it, telling you that you need to move towards something something that excites you. 
if it's exciting you and you're getting excited over it, that's the direction you need to move into. Tap into that energy. That's where you feel more alive. So many people are saying these days that time's just blowing by. Time is, it's, the years are just going fast so quickly. Again, it's an awareness thing. But what I believe, time blows past when we do the same repetitive things every day. If you have the same coffee, you go on the same walk, you're doing the same tasks, you're doing looking after the kids, whatever, you're doing the same stuff, it all blends into each other. There's no like peak moment. Maybe you have peak moments, I'm sure you do. Those little bits will stand out. Maybe you're just, maybe you're just living on the edge of like where you should be. And that's what, what you wanna do is aim for momentum. What I'm trying to say is like when you do those things that excite you, you tap into a higher energy. You, you wanna just, be, you wanna be alive. People talk to you, they can see the vibrance in your eyes because you just did something exciting. There's so many of you guys, and it's your choice what you do with your life. Sitting at home, trying to save, trying to work a job and then save, 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 as much as you can, eating the, the cheapest shit food that's not doing any good for your health. Your exercise routines are so inconsistent that what are you gonna do is you're gonna save yourself into getting like investment properties or whatever, and then that's gonna give you a little bit extra money. So then what, one day you can go and maybe do something that's $500 a week extra of passive income. By that time, inflation's gonna take over and everything's just gonna cost more. So you're always gonna be in the same situation. I believe that when you tap into that excitement, the energy that you have, and then you link that with trying to provide a value for someone. Let's just say you're into cars. And this is this example that I've done in my life that has worked out for me and I'm just getting started with it. So I'm very, always been loved cars since I was younger. And it's like this passion and obsession that I've had that I don't can't really explain. A lot of guys have it where they just you know, see a cool car go past and you're like, oh, that's so cool. Look at the wheels, look at the color, look at the engine, whatever. And that can be a quite a costly hobby to have. But my awareness flipped and I said to myself, okay, it is costly to have cars and own cars and petrol and the things that go wrong with cars. Have a look at that. While I'm saying that, there's a cool VE GDS going past. Let's just film this guy. Look at that. Oh, it's crackle popping too. Yes, beautiful car. If you're watching from a different country, obviously from the accent, Australian. So that's an Australian built car. You can't get those over. Actually, in America you can, uh, what do they call it? The, what do you guys call it over there? GDO, I think. Chev, I don't know. What was I saying? <laughs> yeah, the car. So there's been multiple reasons why I started a car YouTube channel. Because every time we work on cars or we go to a car event, not every single time, but most of the time, we kind of document what we're doing. And we've been posting what we've been doing with cars, fixing up old cars for a while now. And some of the views, some of the videos have got some high views and we're monetized. I think the channel has made over $10,000 plus sponsorships, like people sending us parts, people sending us all kinds of stuff. I reject them all the time. Like I don't want to just be one of those channels who's like, today's sponsor is not. I, I get annoyed when I watch those videos, but it's going to leverage us into other opportunities because I'm like, hang on, if we show what we're doing, people get motivation from that. Other people who don't live in your life they, if they saw every little part of your life, they'll be like, that's awesome. That's motivational. I could do that. But a lot of people, and it's fine if you don't want to share it, but if you decide you want to share it, that can lead to an abundance of wealth, an abundance of value creation for those around you. Because through content and through media, we share our thoughts, our visions, our experiences, our learnings, and we can save someone else years and years of time by just sharing our knowledge. There's no doubt in my mind that you once before have searched up something on YouTube to see how to do it. And it was annoying because the guy was like, hey guys, today we're gonna be, she's like, shut up and just do it, mate. Just get to the point. So we started doing that. We did how to fit a headlight to the car. We didn't even know how to do it. It was our first time doing it. And we just thought to ourselves, like, all right, let's just film what happens. The video is terrible, but it's got like 50,000 views and hundreds of people commenting saying, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If I was to remake that video today, I'd probably make it like a 60 second video. But what I'm trying to say is like, if you want to make money online, you can do that by just sharing your knowledge. I, I try and encourage my dad actually. He's, he's been a salesman for many years. I think over 20 years, 30 years, I don't know. He's really good. Like he just loves people and he's very passionate 
and he likes catching up with people and he developed a system like we've got a big family right we've got four kids in our family so i'm the eldest of four under me is my sister then two other brothers and my dad had a mortgage he was a young guy 25 when he had me and he was under pressure to perform and make money to pay off this house that he got it's like the same situation a lot of people have but this is back in the 80s 1986 87 88 and he had no choice he had to leave his uni course and his perspective saw that he needed to become a really good salesman so he he pumped it at that and he worked up the ranks he got high positions area manager state manager making millions of dollars for these people that were paying him probably 100k i don't know slowly working it up plus incentives so plus incentives getting a phone call from matthew matthew george how are you mate good mate how are you yeah good good that's good just a quick one so have you got any twilight this week let me just check the calendar for you thanks sir no worries this week hang on where are we we're august we have one night left we have thursday night left okay lock it in thursday night um it's gonna be in fraser eyes locked in man oh, i'll get back to you shortly with another one okay oh i love it thank you sir no worries <laughs> mate i'm just making you a millionaire oh i love it i'm actually filming a, i'm filming a video at the moment and you're in the video me yeah how am i in the video i'm walking along with a selfie stick doing a motivational rant and then you called me and i'm just continuing to record <laughs> so it's good that you said you're making me a millionaire because that's what i'm talking about getting rich yeah no worries there just you go guys see that i just manifested the phone call <laughs> yeah just give me a shout out mate give matthew a shout out here real estate agent he's just he's just starting his career now if you want your house sold for like hundreds of thousands above what it's worth don't call matthew because he's, he's just too busy for you guys all right if you want to apply to work with matthew click on the link below and fill out your application form and matthew will get back to you matthew's people will get back to you matthew's people yeah well hang on hang on if you think about it like what's your actual goal what do you where do you want to get to we're not doing a podcast here, mate. No, but what do you like? Just quickly, like, where do you work, where do you see yourself in like five years? Do you even know? Or? I don't know, mate. Come, come on, bro. You're supposed to know this stuff. Retired. Retired. Done. Just. Oh, I was checking out your house on realestate.com. It's pretty epic. Which house? Your house, mate. The one where you live. Oh, why are you checking out my house? <laughs> I was just looking around Sunbury to see what's like what's sold in the area, and I'm like, oh, I'm near X area. Let's just click on yeah. that. And I was like, oh, damn. Hey, it does look nice. I was like, I'm gonna make friends with Matthew. Like, come over and stuff. We have barbecues. It actually, it looks a lot different now. It's all renovated. So. Renovated, man. It looked pretty good when I saw it in the photos. Yeah. Like, gonna make it look better, bro. That's a good place to do podcasts and stuff. It would be. Oh, dude, get onto it, mate. You want to be retired? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. All right, I'll speak to you soon, man. All right. Thank you, sir. Locked in. No worries. See you, mate. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. So that was just a job booking for, for top real estate photography. What was I talking about? The YouTube channel. I think that's what I was talking about. So now the YouTube channel is generating new opportunities for us. So I've seen and, and been aware that like if we provide value for people, which comes in different forms. Entertainment, motivation, products and services. I could be posting videos on how to do a, a high-end paint job on a car. There's a dog who's gonna come say hello to me in a second, I think. I could be doing that and raising education and awareness on what to, what to look for with that and then people will like it because they'll be like, he's, he's, he's providing me with value. So we started doing that, views going up, ad revenue coming in using that money to reinvest into the business because our goal is to open up our own shop. It's so my son who's 15 at the moment, he'll be 16 in a couple of weeks. He wants to be a mechanic. He's said it since he was a little kid and he's absolutely amazing at working on cars, pulling things off, fixing stuff, restoring stuff. He's put engines in and out. So I'm like, let's just do it together. We can document our journey of learning along the way and be persistent with it. And that's another thing that people, I, I believe in my awareness, need to improve, is their persistence. A lot of people give up very quickly in regards to, say, relationships. You might really want to go out with someone. You want to go out with a girl, or you want to, or you want to meet, or go out with a guy, and you've got this person in mind, and you've tried, you've tried, and they said no, or well, they're just not interested, and you've given up. You're not persistent at all. You can do it in a creepy way. I'm not saying to do it in a creepy way and just keep asking every day. 
we go out with me? Can we go out? Can we do this? No. Lock it into your head. If that's what's exciting you the most right now, lock it into your head that you're going to get it. You're going to do it. Whatever it is. It could be a business thing. It could be a new job. It could be starting a business that you wanted. Lock it into your mind that you are going to do it no matter what. Donald Trump says it. Never give up. So many people give up so quick. Be persistent. It is in the book, Think and Grow Rich. It talks about how many, many very wealthy and successful people in their lives have been told no over and over again. I'm just gonna check how much card space I got left. Many wealthy people have been told no again and again and again, but through pers persistence, they end up achieving what they wanted because they lock onto it. If it's with a relationship, if you're going in a relationship with someone that you want, that's saying no to you or they're just not interested, think, reverse engineer it and think about what that person might want in a relationship. Obviously there's a spark there for a reason. There's something there that's attracted you to them and they're not attracted to you. Maybe the approach was too needy. Maybe you need to work on yourself more. Maybe you need to back off a little bit, give them some space, show that you're, you're not desperate. Maybe you need to start go into the gym, work on yourself, build your confidence up. Maybe you need to think about what you can provide to them rather than you trying to get something out of it. Because that's another thing these days that I see in my awareness <laughs> that's quite common is people are so quick to line up for the free sausages or the free barbecue if there is one or the free food. But, it, but when it comes to helping to each other and, and giving to other people, we're very slow to do that. And if you're, if you're someone who does that, because you feel like you want more for yourself, it's actually the opposite. You're creating more lack for yourself, lining up for the free sausage, rather than you putting on a free sausage schedule, schedule, schedule for the community. If you just put if you just put on a free sausage schedule for the community, people coming up meeting you, oh thank you. Like people might remember you, and then one day when you're an old man and you're and you're stuck somewhere, they'll they'll come and help you. And that's just a random example. But do you really think they're going to remember you if you lined up for the free sausage and you're the one who took it? So try and give what you want to receive. My dad drilled that into me and I'm so happy and proud and thank you dad for, for saying that to me a million times. He said, he always said to me, treat others how you want to be treated. And I've lived my life by that. It's important to do it. If you really believe that what goes around comes around, you need to do that. Lately I've been trying to think of, I saw this one video that kind of freaked me out a little bit and it was explaining how there's this idea that you are everyone else. Like you were, when you died, you died and then you, you're just reborn as someone else and you live that whole life and then you die and then you live someone else. And basically everyone around you is you. So every time, I'm explaining it really badly. So every time in your life you help someone else, you're actually helping yourself. And every time else, every time you dogged someone or you did something bad to try and help yourself, you actually dogged your own self. And I, like, I'm getting chills saying it because I believe it's real. You look at the people who are really rich. Not that that is everything. What do they do? They help a lot of people. Amazon, bang, put in systems to help a lot of people. A lot of people are employed. A lot of people get products and services, bang. Guy's rich, can do a lot with the money. A lot of these really wealthy people, like even Elon Musk, they don't, yeah, they probably like the money, but they like what they, they've, they can do with it. They're not sitting, like Elon Musk, I'm sure is not sitting there smoking like, not that there's anything wrong with it, but smoking like $10,000 cigars with all these honeys around him and like, I'm rich, I'm rich. Like he's using the money to like try and better humanity and humankind, which is going to perpetuate into more money, especially when he has little breakthrough moments. And then there's you in your house and you want more, but you're just sitting there scrolling on your phone, thinking about me, 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 me. Like what's in it for me? What's, what can, how many investment properties can I get? How much money can I make? How, many, how much free shit can I get so I can save more? And that is creating a massive lack because you're me, me, me. Do you know, everything you want is with other people. I could be wrong, maybe you're not that kind of person. Maybe you're someone who wakes up in the morning and you, and you pray and you say, God, how do you want me to serve people now? How can I serve you? Use me to serve for other people. And that's one of the reasons why I pull out this selfie stick video and do this. So I'm gonna end it there, guys. I hope you got something out of this. If you want anything or need help with anything in particular, send me an email, george at ggmedia.com.au. I'll help you with whatever you need. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Leave a comment and we'll see you in the next video.